What was the first thing you ever filmed on camera? And can you remember what or why you filmed it? <laughs> huh. Um, the first thing I ever filmed, it would, it would have to have been, yeah, without, it was, it was uh, snowboarding videos of my, my brothers back probably in, uh, mm. yeah, at least, you know, 30, 30 years ago or so in Vermont um, on a little ski hill with my uh, mom and dad's um, VHS tape, tape quarter, uh, tape, uh, you know, uh, camcorder. So I think that okay. was, you know, not actually the start of my film career. Um, it didn't really engage me in, uh, in cameras at that point. We were just trying to get better at, at, uh, at snowboarding at the time. Many kids want to grow up to be the next big action director. What drew you to this specific style of filmmaking instead? You know, I've been a director of photography for, you know, about 14 years. Um, and the type of work, I mean, I've done all, all, everything from documentaries to handheld, you know, handheld commercials and, and real people, um, um, testimonial, uh, you know, projects on cancer and, and all kinds of different things. And then all the way up to a second unit action sequences for big, big Hollywood motion pictures. Um, but I think the, the working with jet aircraft, um, the team building and the team that goes into um, executing shots on, on the, the level that we were um, meeting on this particular program, I think was the, the, best environment in filmmaking I've ever been in. Um, it was a, it was a incredibly skilled group of people that are all the best and the best at what they do, um, in, you know, kind of multidisciplinary and, um, environment and putting this group of, of talented professionals together and in, in, you know, aviators, um, engineers, meteorological, um, experts, and to approach the landscape and big weather and you know phenomenon like the aurora, um, this was this was a a very impressive ninja team of very skilled individuals, and I think the camaraderie that comes from being in intense situations is um, where people thrive on on focus. It was it was really special. How does the experience of of filming live real aircraft compared to um, what audiences typically see in big Hollywood productions like Top Gun Maverick. I, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I, I've seen Top Gun twice. I, I love the movie. I thought it was, I thought it was great. Um, but I think the type of filming is, is very different. I think, um, you know, for, from an, an action sequence, you know, if you look at the, the average time on screen that each shot is given, um, it's maybe one and a half seconds, two seconds. Um, the, the pacing of the edit is so rapid fire that, you know, for one, it makes for, you know, a lot of high energy um, and, and a lot of action movies are like this. I mean, Fury Road, uh, Mad Max, I think the, the longest time on screen for any given shot was 1.5 seconds. Um, and I think the difference for how we approached our work is we really needed shots that, uh, I mean, if you, if you watch the show, you'll watch shots that are uh, 200 plus miles long. So we're tying um, ecosystems together and running on, um, you know, from the, from the plains south of Denali, crossing over the top of Denali from 150 miles away. So those shots, you know, to watch the development of, in, in, the, in the Denali shot in particular, the Aurora Borealis is up above us and we're flying in the dark. Um, with an extremely high sensitivity camera, camera um, and you can't see the ground below you. It's completely black, um, but the camera can pick it up and they're flying just off of instruments. And the shot is about 45 minutes long to capture. Um, and then what we do in post is speed that up um, 40 to 50 times so that you get to see the atmospheric behavior of the Aurora. Um, and you get to see the, the motion and the transformation of the landscape um, over time. Essentially, what we're doing is compressing space and time 
um, down so that it's in a digestible moment that would fit into an action type sequence. You know, maybe it's not two seconds long, it's now eight seconds long, but you're compressing this greater perspective of time into a shorter window um, through the power of movie magic. But it's all captured in camera for real. On the topic of the America the Beautiful series, um, what was your favorite shot to capture? There's so many shots that are memorable for us. Um, I think there, there's one for me that was probably the most challenging from an operational standpoint as a cameraman um, in, in, like I said, some of these shots take about 30 to 45 minutes um, in real time to capture. Some are 10 minutes, some are, some are much shorter, but some of the longer ones are, it doesn't seem like the operation would be very challenging, but it's, it's, a, very, it's a very controlled movement because if you're moving the camera over 45 minutes or an hour, the amount of pan or tilt that you add into that, into that the input is gonna be magnified as you speed up the shot to, you know, let's say 50 X. So any, any bump, any, any jostle is gonna input into the camera as a visual um, hiccup. So you have to think in slow motion as you're working. And it's, a, we call it ants in the pants, where you, you wanna fix something that you're seeing, um, but you're kind of, you're not allowed to because you have to think about the shot in this long, enduring 30-minute um, uh, time frame. So all corrections have to be done very carefully and very slowly. But I think the, the main shot was a climb up Denali um, front at dawn. And it was the, the, um, the creative was the sun returning to the frozen north after a long winter. So we came in at about 300 feet off the ground um, up, a, up a glacier um, with Denali in the background, which is a, just above 20,000 feet. So we started at about 3,000 feet above sea level and climbed all the way up the glacier and then made a fairly rapid ascent up over the south buttress and then into a spiraling orbit that ended up finishing looking down on Denali with the sun beaming over the horizon onto the face um, and finished the shot at 25,000 feet. So we had a 20, 21,000, 22,000 foot transition in altitude through airspaces, through significant amount of turbulence. Um, we had a 60 knot um, headwind, which turned into a crosswind, which turned into a tailwind as we br brought in our orbit. So that from a technical standpoint, I think is, is I I'm pretty proud of that shot because that, that was not easy. That's incredible. Um, it, it's one thing to get great aerial drone shots, but it's, it's another skill entirely to curate them into engaging cohesive piece of, of, of cinema. Can you describe how you effectively fit all these puzzle pieces together so well? My background is not, um, for the most part, in aerial cinematography. Um, I come from a journalism background um, as, as a still photographer and then moved into motion pictures um, as a camera operator and then eventually as a director of photography. And when you're doing um, narrative work, I mean, everything is broken up into, each shot has to build towards um, how ultimately the scene will be watched. And there's all these careful, um, you know, you have your, your, your wide establishing shots, your mediums, your, your medium close-ups that all bring different flavors to the emotional um, nature of a scene. So I tried to bring more of a traditional approach to how we would design a scene um, in natural history. So I think it was a, a really nice opportunity to craft how these, um, how do we show a geographical feature or a storm or a uh, phenomenon like the Aurora Borealis to give the editor the opportunity to have all of these different types of shots that they could pull from and craft a really compelling scene. Kind of going on both ends of the spectrum here, if there's any um, reservations you, you hold, things to be wary of, but also how far do you push the limits of 
of capturing shots like this. My team at V Speed work um, incredibly close together. I mean, it's our we're, we all spend a lot of time on the road together, and there are they're they're my family away from my family. Um, and I think we have a we have a motto inside our our operational team that we assess the risk, um, but we make it worth it. Um, we make sure that everything is calculated. Um, and, you know, there's going to be more thunderstorms. The Grand Canyon will be there tomorrow. Um, if anybody's not feeling um, safe or up to par or somebody didn't get a good night's sleep, um, we don't go. And I think, you know, the risks are, are there, but we calculate it and we work with some of the best aviators in the world. Um, you know, we have our, our, one of our main pilots, John Flanagan, is a, is a top gun um, adversary pilot. Um, he's a naval aviator. Um, he flew the, the Tomcat um, that was in the first Top Gun movie. Um, he was a, a F-16N driver as an adversary in the Top Gun um, fighter weapons school. Um, so he is the real deal um, of Maverick in the second Top Gun movie. But yeah, I mean, we fly with the, the best of the best and, and we approach it from a, from a safety standpoint. And, and also from a, from a shot making standpoint, um, we try to mitigate as much of the risk as we can and bring the margin up to where you teeter into, uh, this is not safe, but we never cross the line. And if anybody feels uncomfortable, um, we knock it off and, and we go again or we go home and, and it's a no harm, no foul and everybody wants to come home. So. We push the risk, but but we we try to never never exceed. That's incredible. Thank you so much for uh, spending time with me this morning, Greg, and, and speaking through kind of the experiences of you as a cinematographer or director of a DP, as well as the experience working on America the Beautiful. Neil, thank you.